Now, let's discuss about uh, one article which has highlighted the overconfidence associated with the clearing houses. Logically speaking, one of the major tasks of the clearing house is risk management. Right? Now, are the clearing houses really able to manage the risk effectively? Or are they simply overrated? That is something which this article is primarily bringing up. Are they able to eliminate or reduce the systemic risk which has uh, which is coming out in the financial transaction? If not, why are they not able to do that? Do they really have the potential to mitigate these kind of risks? Or is it just a hype that is getting created over the abilities of the clearing house? So there is some kind of discussion on the top of it. What the clearing house can do? What, what are the limitations that are there with respect to the clearing house as far as the systemic risk concerned? Just bringing out a few examples from the financial crisis, the entire mortgage market has failed and because of that, very big financial chains suffered big jolts. We have seen the cases where Bear Stearns has gone out of the business, Lehman Brothers had to go out of business, AIG got a big bailover. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, which are typically uh, considered to be government-sponsored kind of enterprises which are backed by the government, which were typically uh, expected to be a triple A credit rated kind of firms, they got badly affected. Some of the traditional banks like Washington Mutual, just by getting into the subprime lendings, they had to surrender their business and lots of existing Financial institutions also like Bank of America, Citibank, Merrill Lynch, all these giants, they got very badly threatened. Now, what has actually happened, especially with respect to AIG, if I see, they have written good number of credit default swaps. Now, what has happened in the entire process, whatever are the loans which the customers have raised from the banks, the banks have sold these loans to this AIG. So AIG has written lots of purchased lots of loans from the bank. And along with that, AIG has also written credit default swaps. And as per this uh, credit default swaps, it has agreed to repay the customers. For a small premium, it has been taking a premium from each of the various uh, counterparties uh, with respect to a reference bond. And any of these bonds defaulting, AIG has promised that it would, uh, uh, it would pay a previously agreed upon price in case any of the reference entities are going to default. And what we have seen is lots of entities have defaulted. And uh, in this deal, the counterparties for AIG, they were very happy. They got an assurance. And at the same time, they had a regulatory benefit also because uh, the counterparty is AIG, which is almost a AAA rated kind of a firm. So no specific collaterals are required. And in this way, AIG has almost written 500 billion worth of obligations. There is no transparency in all these things. And uh, even 60 billion in the mortgage-backed securities by issuing the securities, buying the loans of the various uh, banks, almost 60 billion going into it. And uh, this is where, in case... When, when its investments in the mortgage-related uh, investments have actually weakened, counterparties started typically demanding more and more collateral from AIG and that to cash-based collateral, the liquidity has already gone very much weaker by that time, which has resulted in the government coming forward and doing a bailout. 
Same case with the financial crisis at Lehman Brothers, which is a major participant in both the cleared futures market over the exchange as well as various bilateral OTC derivatives transactions. Once uh, the shortfall position, cash shortfall of Lehman has been uh, rumored out, all the partners, they have closed out their positions with Lehman and along with that, they have asked for more and more collateral. In both the cases, a layman could not comply with the requirements of its counterparties. Much, much added to that, a large money market uh, mutual fund. This has failed, wherein it has large number of positions with layman. This has created kind of rumors. Uh, this has created so much of virals in the industry, which has resulted that the which which uh, prompted the government to start guaranteeing all the money market deposits. If the failure of a money market mutual fund occurs, it becomes a big uh, effect. It, it takes a big jolt on the performance of the economy as such. So the government had to come forward, give some kind of guarantee uh, regarding uh, the securing of all the deposits for a time to make sure that uh, a run of money market investors from the funds does not occur. Now, if we see all these things, one point that is central every time what comes out is what is the clear, what is the role of the clearing house here? When every of these transactions are going through the clearing house, how come clearing house not able to identify the problem at the early stage and cut it off before the entire thing became more and more viral? So, after every crisis, it is the ability of the clearing house comes into picture. Is it really able to handle the risk of the system? Are these two big to fail kind of systems or uh, entities, are they taking some undue advantage in the process? Where is the clearing house typically going wrong in this entire process? So this is where after each big failure, the authorities, regulators, they see clearing house as a means to improve the status quo, but it never happened. The whole, uh, uh, pro it, could have, uh, it could have reduced the bailout. Clearing house would have completely diffused the cost to avoid the bailouts of these bigger firms like Bear Stearns or even uh, Lehman Brothers. So, are they really capable of handling systemic risk? Because whenever we talk about a systemic risk, it starts local. A failure of one big financial firm, let's say Lehman Brothers or a Bear Stearns. And it is, this particular impact is spinning out of control. And it is spread to the entire financial system first. And slowly it damages the overall economy because of the contagious effect. So initially one firm goes into default. But that firm is so big enough that it has lots of transactions with other firms. Now all these firms which had very big transactions with this firm in the financial markets, they start to go. Uh, they start to perform badly and all the other non-financial firms which are having uh, deals with this financial firm, they slowly feel the impact. This is what is a contagious effect and uh, that is what is contributing to the systemic risk. We see a key institution failing to repay debt that slowly gets passed on to the entire system and results in a failing of the system overall. That is what we are terming as systemic risk. And in this case, what typically happens? One, a contagious effect. Two, system-wide we see asset price deterioration. Just like the way it has happened in the real estate market of the United States. Once the fall is occurring, See, when everyone has taken the mortgage loans, real estate prices were booming and booming. And once it has reached the saturation level, the price is starting to fall. 
and uh, because the prices are started to fall people are not able to pay back their loans or they were not interested in paying back their loans the resulted in the banks uh, being forced to sell off more and more of the collateral that have been uh, kept with them in the form of the property more selling happening the prices got deteriorated even more further which has resulted in even more a massive damage and a systemic risk so systemic risk can occur one because of the contagious effect but during that process we even see that the asset prices they are going to deteriorate quite drastically and in this case we also see the transparency of the information becomes much much weaker every firm doesn't know what is happening with the other firm so the fear kind of thing gets generated into the system and uh, uh, and a lot of things uh, typically uh, gets uh, uh, concealed in terms of revealing to the other parties typically the common the common expectation among the authorities is clearing houses they should contain the counterparty risk they should address the counterparty risk and they should be effective enough in terms of preventing the contagious effects by making sure if the first firm is failed immediately taking an action in which all the counterparties of the first firm are getting settled off but is it really doing that and it's also expected that the clearing house it can reduce the systemic risk by insulating the entire financial system from the failure of the large participant it has the potential provided it can really bring out proper uh, mechanisms it has the potential to uh, to uh, make sure that a systemic collapse does not occur regulatory thoughts are these yes these clearing houses they they are taking things for granted and they are going into the kind of a mechanism that they are too big to fail and they would be bailed out typically when we see what are the things that a clearing house can do in order to reduce the systemic risk as a part of the regular activities that are done by the clearing house they smoothly sort out and they compress a tangle of trades in this process they enhance the transparency in the pricing process they bring out standardization in the trading of various financial instruments and because of that they try to bring more and more investors and participants in each of the trading market so the size of the market gets increased for every product uh, group they are trying to bring in uh, more and more volumes and they make the trading more and more efficient and uh, which means the difference between an experienced person versus uh, a new investor hardly uh, exists so which is resulting in money makers typically are uh, not uh, being able to uh, take the advantage of the difference in the knowledge and the experience levels uh, to make huge spreads they are resulting in narrowing down of the spreads and the dealer profits it is making it easier for the new firms to typically trade the instrument and enhancing the competition between the firms it's able to centralize the collection of the collateral process it is mutualizing the losses among the clearing house members because almost a clearing house it has a clearing members who are typically responsible for uh, depositing the initial margin variation margin and even some kind of uh, fund which is uh, which is uh, used in case of one of the counterparties defaulting in the process and uh, it is also ensuring that this uh, uh, clearing members are more responsible for any kind of actions of their customers risk related uh, events of their customers as well as the non clearing members who trade and get the things cleared through this clearing member so it is 
mutualizing the losses among the clearing house members and it has various algorithms and formulas which can adjust the collateral posting levels by assessing the counterparty risk on a regular basis. So all these things when done religiously and effectively by the clearing house, the overall risk in the process can very well be reduced. A few, a little bit more details into the standardizing process. In general, any of the financial markets are typically opaque. There is a lot of information asymmetry that can exist in case of the typical financial market. Because there could be a few experienced traders who are day in day out and a few occasional traders who typically get into the trading process only on uh, an occasional basis. So if the market is more and more opaque, what we see is occasional trader, typically he may not be knowing what is the price that he needs to buy or sell something. But uh, on the other side, the experienced trader will typically have lots of information based on the experience and so he can try to use that to his advantage. And that could result in the spreads getting completely widened. The occasional trader, he may be uh, paying more than what is required for in case of a buy transaction. He could be receiving less than what is uh, what he should get in case of a selling transaction, which means the experienced trader is able to take advantage of the knowledge and the information uh, that is uh, possessed in excess uh, which would uh, weaken many new entrants to come into these kind of trading markets. But the clearing houses are uh, facilitating that particular process by making the prices public. And all the standardized financial products, typically we see lots and lots of futures being traded on uh, uh, exchange. They are mostly standardized products itself and they can reporting the trades on a regular basis. One of the major objectives is narrow the spread between what they pay and what they charge for the same deal, making the overall trading process more and more uh, affordable to major sections of the society. And they are able to centralize the risk assessment of the counterparty. The, see here, Okay, this is one thing which has a positive note as well as a negative. Okay, A and B counterparties. There is a clearing house in between. Now, in a regular scenario, the trader's obligation to this particular party exists, to this particular party exists. Now, what is typically happening is with the clearing house coming into picture, it is going this way. So, which means the clearing house is acting as a counterparty to both the trades. The party, if it had been a direct, the party which is at risk wants to be protected if the counterparty is not able to pay. In this case, what is happening is, <coughs> in general, it would typically be A will monitor B for the solvency case. But when it comes to a central counterparty, it is trying to monitor A, B, D, F, all others by using a mechanical collateral rules. It will try to understand how much collateral is typically a uh, are required for the trade that is placed rather than the credit worthiness of the counterparty. And the advantage comes both from a trading dimension as well as the regulatory. From a regulatory perspective, earlier if a regulators want to see the positions of different uh, counterparties uh, having trades with different, we it's very difficult to see who owes how much to owe whom. Whereas here, the, the centralized uh, clearing house, it is making the things clear. It is, uh, it is providing uh, the books of the clearing house would be sufficient enough for the regulators to really evaluate who owes how much to whom. 
So, but if it is a kind of a dispersed kind of a mechanism like this, regulators cannot readily see the aggregate risk that is being taken at a complete system level. Probably they may be knowing at each of the transaction levels, but as a system, if they want to find out what is the overall risk exposure, it would have been a very difficult process. Even they make uh, the centralized collateral collection process uh, more and more better because there is a lot of netting that can come out. Participants can get a benefit out of it. So it could reduce the size of the collateral, makes the trading cheaper and safer. And at the same time, when, when the positions are going odd, it can very well demand good collateral and that, that could have avoided crisis altogether. But of course, as a part of the process, because of various OTC transactions, uh, the, 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 uh, the, this clearinghouse uh, could not get into that particular process, but clearinghouse would have the potential in terms of doing this. And it, uh, it can also post uh, clearinghouse members, they are posting the capital, which means there is some kind of mutualization of the losses that are happening. And all these things are taken as uh, inputs when it is uh, going towards the implementation of the centralized clearing parties kind of a mechanism as well. Now, this is where the, the negative shade of the clearing house can be looked at. One point that is uh, clearly being brought out is the clearing houses are typically doing a transfer of the losses. They are not eliminating the risks. Probably it is like, okay, let's say the clearing house is acting as a counterparty to all the trades. It is taking the initial margin and the variation margin from each of these parties. So clearing house is typically reducing the risk of its failover. So clearing house need, may not fail in this transaction. But look at the other way. All these are posting collaterals. All these are paying initial margins and the variation margins. Means the collateral which is available with them to pay to someone else has gone down. Means their paying capacity has gone down. Which means their ratings could go down. Which means the risk for the other counterparties which have deals with this particular party, it is increasing. So, which means overall it did not eliminate the risk in the system. It has only transferred the risk from itself to something else. The clearing house member that is posting the collateral to the clearing house lowers the exposure of the clearing house to the extent of collateral. But at the same time, the exposure to the other financial firms with which it has transactions is typically going up, which means overall in this process, it's only clearing house is winning and all the other counterparties are typically losing. So, which means it is not eliminating the systemic risk. It is eliminating the risk of its own process. It is safe. But it is, uh, it is not eliminating the systemic risk. It's only moved to the other parties. So that's one thing. So it is not that good at uh, eliminating the systemic risk. In some cases, it is even transferring the losses, only partially reducing the risk. And uh, it's also observed that uh, even uh, based on uh, the typical Modiglani and Miller irrelevance proposition, which says any financial transaction should not reduce the risk of the system. It's only transferred from one party to the other. And the clearinghouse is doing exactly that itself. It's not eliminating the risk in the process. It's only facilitating the transfer of risk from one party to the other. And on some cases, it is seen even on a positive note, clearing houses do have the potential to contain the contagious risk. They can very well mutualize the risk. But yes, to what extent they can do it? They have the potential. Theoretically, there are many avenues where all these things can very well happen. 
the transactional efficiencies are very high with respect to clearing uh, houses. They become the marginal benefit that saves the systematically vital firm. They provide the speed and certainty to its insiders. At the same time, the speed and certainty of the transactions and settlements happen to the outsiders as well. They can very well restructure the derivatives trading so that it is less concentrated and uh, to a large extent the trade happens outside the core of the two big to fail firms. All these things can very well be done. There is a positive side. There are a few disadvantages that are built as a part of this particular each of these activities. So this is what is the typical uh, broader context of this uh, article. Wherein uh, are, it typically talks about are the clearing houses typically overrated? Do they really reduce the systemic risk as a part of the transactions? Right? 